Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to look at a Hawk. The Hawk 5 in fact. In fact, this is Hawk Week on Drone Racer 101. I have three of them we're going to look at, but this one is first. This is the new Emax 5 inch Hawk. It's kind of the evolution of the Emax Nighthawk, which was a really popular drone in its day, but they have really stepped up their game on this one. Quick look at what you get in the box. Mine came with a FreeSky XM Plus already installed. We'll take a look at that in a minute. It's an Emacs F4 Magnum stack. So this is a really nice flight stack that they've put together and it's all assembled and ready to go for you. The manual is very basic, but it has all the information that you need. So if you need detailed statistics on the flight controller, there you go. When you're ready to flash it, we've got instructions for that, including even how to use Zadig, which is really nice. You get two of these Emacs Pagoda 2 antennas, and as others have pointed out, these are left-hand polarized. So it's actually kind of nice. I don't have many of these, so having an extra spare is good, but make sure you know these are left-hand polarized if you use them, because you would not want to use these with your right-handed antennas antennas but you really should have both today especially if you go racing it might be required that you have both available it comes with a fox air camera so you've got controls and some extra screws zip ties and more screws to keep everything together and do repairs as needed instructions for your fox air camera you'll see it ships with a linear antenna but if you want to have one of those circular antennas on there you can certainly do that and you just have to change out the cable here and maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen as an extra accessory, an extra arm, just in case you break one, you've got an extra ready to go without even having to order one. And you notice something? Look at that. There are four holes in this. All the other reviews I've seen only had three, so that's interesting. So here it is, and it's a beauty. As I mentioned, look, four screws. So they have changed this design since they sent out the early prototypes. I really like these arms. They're really thick, really really stiff, but they're really narrow so that they don't block much of your airflow. I like the arms sticking off of here to protect your motor so when you take a hit, you could still theoretically get it, but just that little bit of extra, it's a lot nicer than when they just stick it out to one side. I like that new Y shape that it's happening a lot now. While we're looking at the bottom, they did already include a rubber grip on it that worked really well and a Velcro strap. Some people have reported loose screws in shipping. I checked all mine and mine were good, but make sure you check all your screws if you get one of these. Comes with the 2206 light motors. These are 2300 kV and these are super lightweight and really really nice. These things spin up and you give you just amazingly good control. Emacs loves their aggressive props and they did not fail here. These are the Emacs Avian props and they give spectacular thr low and middle throttle control. On the high end they are super power hungry but they give you just spectacular control and this took me a while to get used to I'll admit. So here's the stack we've got a 4-in-1 ESC, we've got the flight controller, on this side we have the VTX which is really nicely designed so you can easily see what channel you're on. They cut a hole and unlike some other vendors they cut it in the exact right spot so just at a glance you know exactly what channel and band you are using. On the other side here we have the XM Plus which has been soldered directly to the board. It's kind of nice. There's a three pin header connector on there that this is just connected to directly. And then the antennas, This these were weird at first. It took me a while to even find the antennas. These were tucked up way underneath here. So what I did is I pulled them out just enough and they've turned just a little bit more. So they're not in danger of being caught by the props at all. but pretty much from whichever angle you're at, you can see one of the antennas. So it ended up working out really well. I got as far as I can possibly go here. I didn't try and do mile runs, but I get about a quarter of a kilometer and had absolutely zero issues at all. So here's one of my concerns. The Foxer camera is really nice and you can see how much angle they've got in this frame, except you can't really use it. Just couldn't get quite the angle that I wanted for a full high speed connection. The angle ended up being good so for racing, which is really what this is. This is a racing drone ready to go. But I wanted a little more camera angle and the stuff is in the way. Like here's the back of the board and the wiring for the motors comes in here and there's just really 
no extra space. I haven't done it yet, but I think the video on this camera should be reversible. I'm gonna see if I can flip this to get more camera angle and then flip the view with the controls that I've got and then it all came with it. It should be pretty easy to do. And then the VTX comes through and the antenna was just hanging out here in the back. And that's not gonna work. The antenna was gonna totally get caught in the props. So what I did is I just attached a zip tie through the top here put a little piece of heat shrink on here and it stuck up and I had great video signal. I was really happy. I had absolutely no desire to attach the Pagoda antenna because this worked out really well for me and it's lighter and it was less in the way. It worked out, I, w I was super happy with it. I'm actually not gonna go through beta flight. I normally do, but in this case, it was set up and ready to go. The only thing I did was change the modes around and change the OSD just to suit my personal taste, but it could just go right out of the box. So if you have any specific questions for this, I didn't change the PIDs. These are all their PIDs. Everything was just, just set. If you need help setting that up, let me know and I'll point you to another video where I've gone through and set that up. But for now, let's go look at some flights. We've got a little more flight footage here than I normally do. My first pack, I just try and get a feel for it to make sure everything's working well. Then I go a little more aggressive. And by the third pack, I really was getting the feel for it. So let's go see that. All right, I've got a helper today, and we're going to try line of sight test number two, which will be a little less exciting because we've already seen this, but watch this. Let's see. How far it can go? Oh, it is a hog at the whoa, full whoa, whoa, throttle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I get, it is going like crazy. What's going crazy? The video? Yeah. Well, that's just a little bit of static. It's fine. It's actually. No, no I like. Listen, I couldn't see anything. Oh, really? Black and gray and everything. Huh. That's weird. I had a good view. I guess that's uh, one point for these goggles. I Camera had, in it's really good. I had four. So we're just gonna do, I need more more camera angle. I have not seen any golfers yet today. I think it's too cold, thankfully, I guess. But that means I get the golf course for at least one more day. Did not want to clip that tree. I have some big plans for this thing, so I'm babying a little bit. Um, so for racing, it probably needs more camera angle. This is the stock camera angle on it. And I can't quite get as much as I feel like I need to. And I've got good control. I still see the fine. Good. Yep, I'm staying in the area here a little closer. Whoa, double flip. <laughs> are, you, are you going crazy? So the question is, how fast is it going to be? We're going to test that here in just a little bit with a different battery. But for now, a well, li little bit of little bit of prop wash there. Our fastest battery. Yep, we'll test it with the fastest battery we've got. Stay out of the sand. That would be very bad. I would hate to get sand in this quadcopter. Yes. Now, if you saw my review of the bison the other day, coming out of a dive was a problem with that. With this, however, it is not. I like it. Man, I don't know that it's my absolute favorite yet. I feel like it's partially because of the camera angle that I can't see quite well enough at full high speed, and these props are really, really good in mid-throttle, right there. Right there, man, they're, they're outstanding. But at full throttle, they'd almost pull too much. How fast do they go? I don't know. Let's try one more battery, and then we'll get the really good one. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, the goal this time is to fly it a little crazier, but still not break it. Anything there? It's it's not made to run at full throttle. That's just kind of evident here. Gosh, I love the way it floats though. It floats really nice. Oh. 
and it lets you recover without any problem. It's locked in. Look at that. No problem. What do you think? Awesome. Awesome. Those are the trees that ate me the other day. They ate you? They did. They ate my quadcopter. Did you get it back? Yes, I okay, did. Good. It was a fateful recovery. Okay, good. Oh, there we go. That was almost a... What's a flag? There's a flag. Flag! Hole in one! <laughs> What's that? Should we go to hole in one? Yeah. Hit it! Go! I don't feel like this is 100 miles per hour. I just don't. <laughs> are you getting dizzy? Where are we at battery-wise? All right. I don't want to screw this up. I want to see how fast it is. All right? Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Last pack of the day. Nothing could possibly go wrong, right? Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. I mean, I wouldn't be a total maniac on the last pack of the day, would I? Especially since we yes. totally lost yes, you would. a flight earlier. Yes, you would. Yes, I would. So let's do a quick rain test. Here we are at like 250 meters and it is crystal clear. Yeah. That looks crystal. great. So. Yeah, looks great. Looks great. Land now. That, don't see that very often, but I'm going to ignore it because you're not the boss of me now. Wait, that tree is uh, Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, I told you. <laughs> I like this tree. How close can we get? Whoa. Don't crack into the tree. I like this thing. It it just uh just does whatever I tell it to without question. Go this way. No, go this way. I mean it just goes. It has no problem at all. This is a little bit smaller battery and the flight time is really good on it. I mean, it's totally acceptable. The only problem is probably the lack of super high camera angle, which could be a problem for some people who want to take it as fast as they possibly can. But man, it just cuts, just goes, wherever you tell it, right out of the box. If I told it to crash into a window, yes, it would do that. Crash into a cloud? Um, I will not fly it that high. See how high those clouds are? That would be illegal. And this battery wouldn't make it that far. Yeah. You alright? You're getting dizzy. Man, okay, I'm hurting this battery though. I guess that's gonna be it for this one. What do you think? Does this meet your seal of approval? I like it. It took a little while for me to really figure out what it was. It's not what I thought it was, but I really like what it is. So I'll admit, when I first flew this, I was a little disappointed with it on my first flight. It just wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a full high speed racer. I've seen other reviews where they're like, oh, it's 100 miles per hour on a 4S, and I just wasn't feeling it. It just didn't seem that ridiculously fast. It was fast. I did do one run with my speed GPS attached to it just to see what it would do, and it hit 88 miles per hour, so it would go back to the future if you needed it to, but it wasn't 100 plus miles per hour. But I think that's okay. I don't need it to be. Once I felt it and flew it some more, I really felt like I had a level of control with this that I don't have with some of the cheaper drones. And this is not a cheap drone, it's $250 today. So I keep in mind different drones have different uses and this one is a racer. And would I take this one racing with me today? Probably, probably. I flew the GT200 the other day, but it's a lot heavier than this. I really like my Holy Bro. I think I like the flight controller in that a little better, but these are way better motors. And this thing sticks and stops faster, which would, I think would probably be better for me. 
It also feels ridiculously durable, so I think it would live up to crashes that I would put it through going racing really well. So if I had to go this weekend, I probably would grab it, partially because it's new and cool. New is cool, right? I think this could very easily compete with the $400 drones that you've got out there. I think you'll be seeing a lot of this this year, a whole bunch of it. I'm hoping to make it to Muncie, Indiana in August this year for the multi-GP championships, and I'll probably race in the senior division badly. So that's going to be when the real test is going to come. I would probably take this today, especially since I have an extra arm. That would actually go a long way for making me decide what to take. I think this thing's going to be really popular, and I was hoping to make a series of videos out of this, but I really don't know what to do with it. I don't know what it needs, so that's my question for you. What what do you want to see done with this? What mods would you make? Tell me what kind of video is going to get 100,000 views that I can do for this thing. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. And again, let me know. What do you want to do? What do we do with it? Different props? Will it handle a 5S? It's only rated for 4S, so I don't really want to stick a 5S on and ruin it since it cost me 250 bucks. I'd rather get a little more use out of it than that. But I don't know. You tell me what else to do. And until next time, remember... That's Amber. She's my girlfriend. Don't tell mom. <laughs> I probably shouldn't fly with spectators. I, I do dumb things. There's a camera right over here too. Right here? The camera's right here. Yeah. So if you end up wanting to say something funny, that's the place to say it. Yeah. All right, now you're on the spot. <laughs> now you can't say anything funny, right? Yeah. Oh sure, you're hilarious when you don't know where the camera is. I'm so dizzy, my head is spinning. Whoa.